How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how you can escape the rat race. Now this is not going to be an instantaneous thing, but you can do something starting today. Dang it, you know what you guys, I thought I could slip this under the rug and no one would catch it. But previously, I made a video that says I saved 100% of my income. Basically, I don't really need to work and all my side income would actually sustain myself for all kinds of living expenses. Technically, I do not have to work, but this is all in the name of margin of safety because you don't want to push yourself to the limit where you don't have a good margin so that you have a little bit more residual income than you actually need because if you just go straight at what you need, then it's a bit dangerous because maybe one month I might not have as much income and then I would be in trouble. So I do have something lined up but I cannot talk about it just yet. It's just for logistical issues. I really want to tell you guys but I just can't. Now in order to escape the rat race, you gotta figure out how much money you spend every year. I call this the burn rate. Given a certain burn rate, if you have enough investments, it can essentially give you enough appreciation and enough dividends in order to completely cover what you need to use every single year. Now, if you have a certain amount of investments, what percentage of appreciation should you expect so that you can make your proper calculations of how much you can produce from your investment so that it can completely cover your burn rate? This 4% rule is highly debated. Some people think, oh, you can't get 4%. Maybe it's only 3% or even 2% if you're lucky. For the purpose of this video, let's just assume 4% for now. That means that every $1,000 that you need to spend every single year, it means you need to have $25,000 worth of investments in order to have it appreciate 4% so that it can give you that $1,000 every year so you can spend it. Now let's say you have a really, really low burn rate and you only spend $20,000 a year. That means, according to the 4% rule, you need $500,000 worth of investments so that when you multiply it by 4%, um, it appreciates 4% so you can keep on withdrawing 4% every single year, which means you can essentially withdraw $20,000. Now having enough investments sitting there is not the only way to produce enough income for you on the side. For example, if every single year you have $1,000 of recurring income from royalties or whatnot, then you can essentially reduce your investments by another $25,000. Essentially, you can have your investments produce some of the income that you need, maybe half of it, and the other half can be produced by residual income of other sorts. This residual income can come from your properties where you rent it out and you get a certain amount after paying mortgage and everything. If you have a positive cash flow, then you can essentially count this as towards your burn rate. Another one is that you could have wrote a book and you could be collecting royalties from it. I know it's not going to be very steady for book royalties, but it can go up and down. You can also collect semi-passive income through Google AdWords through creating your own websites, your own blog, or even through YouTube like this. So how do you escape the rat race as quickly as possible? Basically, you conserve money, which means you're conserving your time in the future. I do say save as much money as possible so that you can take this money and put it in investment so you can start earning residual income. Some people might try to save as much as possible, but you'll end up living a very miserable life because you're just skimping on absolutely everything. Basically, my recommendation is dial your spending back a lot and then come back a little bit. Use a certain percentage of what you save for fun stuff so that you can start living today as well because um, you can't wait 10 years later until you retire and then go, oh, I'm gonna do all this great stuff when I do retire. You gotta spend a little bit today as well. Now today, I'm just gonna go over a few things that can help you build your residual income that would cause you to be a little bit more financial independent and hopefully escape the rat race. Just remember, the sooner you implement these tactics, the earlier you're going to stop working. Yes, you can refuse to do a certain thing that I recommend. However, every single thing that you pick that you refuse to do is essentially gonna push back your early retirement date. I wanna give the cell phone service thing as an example. Now I'm gonna work up to more and more expensive things later on. As you know, I currently use a free cell phone service and I have the ability to buy a very expensive plan every single month and it would not hurt me one bit in my budget. However, I stay with the service and it's not as good a service because I cannot get calls all the time. I only get one gigabyte of LTE data. However, I do not have to spend some 50 to $90 every single month. This works out to be about $1,200 every single year. Now at a 4% safe withdrawal rate, it means I need to have $30,000 of investments sitting in there so that I can extract 4% from there just to pay 
for the cell phone bill. Look at it a different way. If I choose not to have the more expensive service and I just use an equivalent service where I can get by, I can message people, I can get um, internet data and stuff. At a safe withdrawal rate, if I do not use this $1,200 every year just on cell phone plans, I can have $30,000 less of investment money to support myself. Now just ask yourself, how long will it take you to save $30,000 of investments so that 4% of that can pay for your cell phone bills? For most people, it might take a year, two years, or three years. This essentially means your cell phone, using this cell phone, it's gonna cause you to work one, two, or three years more. So simply, if you just choose to use a service that's not as good, except it's free, it's gonna cause you to work one to three years less. This is significant. Think about how long one to three years of your time is. A lot of people that I know refuses to use this Freedom Pop service because it's just too much hassle. You can very well just choose to use this service, but however, you're also choosing to work a couple years longer. One other thing that can keep you from exiting the rat race is financing too much stuff. Whenever you finance anything, when you finance a car, when you finance a student loan, when you finance personal loans, when you finance mortgages, those are all essentially paying interest to someone else. When you pay some interest to someone else, you are taking your hard earned money and giving it to someone else. Now you wanna minimize doing this because all this interest that went to someone else could have just very well just sat in your own bank account instead. And when you have enough streams of not paying other people, right? It adds up a lot. Just imagine if you never have to pay anybody interest, just because you set your life up in such a way where you basically own everything, all the interest that would have been paid to other people, you're just paying yourself. Imagine how big this is. Now, expensive phones is one thing. Expensive cars is yet on another level because the expenditure that you have to give for uh, switching to you know brand new BMW, brand new Mercedes or something is likely on the range on the ballpark of about $5,000 to $10,000 every single year. Now I just talked about a cell phone costing maybe $1,000 every single year will require you to have $30,000 of investable assets in order to pay for that cell phone if you choose to retire. If you have this habit of switching to brand new cars all the time, essentially letting the car depreciate $10,000 of your money every single year. And this is very typical for people that buy brand new cars, they switch them up or something, they sell the old car that they don't want. This is essentially gonna mean you need, I don't know, some $300,000 worth of investable assets in order to pay for your habit of switching cars that cost you $10,000 every single year. Now let's go back to think about how long it'll take you to earn $300,000. Not many people um, have that much in the bank. Not many people have that much in investable assets. It'll likely take, I don't know, 10 years or more to get you to the point where you can have so much money so that you can keep on buying these brand new cars. Suffice to say, the depreciation of your car and this habit of always driving the newest thing is gonna keep you working for a really, really long time and basically, I think, basically forever. The last thing I like to talk about is rent and mortgages at very high cost of living areas. Now, I'm currently in California. I own this home right here. However, it's very, very expensive. And because I choose to live in this area, it's gonna cost me more years in order to earn enough to pay it all off basically. Now, this is something that I have not done mainly because I know a lot of people in the Bay Area and it's very difficult for me to move to a lower cost of living area, like going to Oregon or somewhere like that. If somehow you can uproot yourself, if you don't know too many people in the area, you just moved in for a job, then you can move out easily. That means you can move to a lower cost of living area, which means you need that much less money in order to sustain yourself. If your rent is half as much because you move somewhere that is much lower in cost of living, then that means you need all that much less in investments to support yourself. You need all that much less in residual income from royalties or whatever to support yourself. This is just a starting point and a framework of how to get out of the rat race. Basically, you need to not care about what people think, kind of like a honey badger and not buy into those expensive cars, buy into these expensive phone plans, then you can conserve your resources, conserve your time so that you need to work much less in the future. I hope this enlightens you a little bit because for a lot of people who does a nine to five job, they're under so much stress that is literally killing them. When you're sitting there for eight hours a day, even four hours, if you kind of know when to take breaks, 
is actually physically killing you. Your body is shutting down just from sitting there. I don't know if you feel aches in your back, just kind of sore or tingly feeling. It's literally killing you. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below. Let me know if this video motivated you to start steering your financial ship towards getting out of the rat race. If you're interested in supporting this channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook, you can cancel it before the subscription expires. You can still keep this audiobook for life and it's for free. And you can keep this audiobook and listen to it on your commute during your rat race. If you're interested in supporting my channel directly, I have a Patreon link over here where I give various perks at various contribution levels, such as help with your finances and help with your credit scores. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell, bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get a notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.